Final Cut has just released the Magnetic Mask. There's a couple questions though. Is this something that we should get hypey about? How easy is it to use? How good is it? Does this actually allow us Final Cut editors to finally put things behind us and mask out or rotoscope our subject without too much hassle? And I think most importantly, how does Final Cut's version compare to some of the existing industry standards or tools like DaVinci Resolve Studio's Magic Mask? We're gonna be putting the two programs up to the battle in a comparison, testing the same clips, different scenarios, different subjects, different colors, and let's see how they do. I'm excited to do this one for you guys and also figure out some stuff myself. Let's get into it. How easy is it to find and how easy is it to apply? We're inside a Final Cut. I know Final Cut like the back of my hand, so immediately if I go to this little button here, I can see there's a new option to add Magnetic Mask. Alternatively, if I know the effects panel, I can search Mask and we get this Magnetic Mask option right there. So for somebody who knows Final Cut, you're gonna have no problem finding this. Let's switch over to DaVinci. Same three clips, same exact portion of the clips. Straight off the bat, if I'm in my edit tab in DaVinci Resolve, I go to my toolbox or I'm, you know, I go to my effects and I search for mask, I'm not seeing a mask. Now, because I know DaVinci, I need to go to Fusion. This is one way to do it. And I need to search in my tools in Fusion to create that magic mask. By double clicking, I get my option right here. If we go back to Final Cut, just by double clicking this, it's applied that magnetic mask and I can go to my effects and that is applied just like that. So both are pretty easy. I know in Resolve, there's another option if you go to the color grading tab to add an alpha output to drag these two like that. And then on my masking tool right here, I can go ahead and select my subject and it gives us some more refinement tools. But I'm gonna be using the Fusion version of DaVinci just for this test. So how easy are they to find? Well, pretty easy. I'd say Final Cut is arguably just a tad bit easier at an eight out of 10, fairly, fairly simple to find. Whereas DaVinci, you have to go to a different window from your edit tab. So I'd give that a seven out of 10. So not much difference there, but Final Cut feels simpler to find. Now, how easy are they to use? All right, so I've applied my magnetic mask inside of Final Cut, and it gives me this option right here to kind of color pick or drag over my subject. So I'm just gonna click once, and just by clicking once, it's done a near perfect selection. If I just zoom in here, I can scroll down, and you can see that there's some, it's missed some of the points there on my lower torso. I assume what I would do there is just use the color dropper, and now it's selected some of my computer. So then I would need to go to the subtract and click that right there. And that to me looks perfect. And then I know I would need to click analyze. The final cut mask has applied. Let's go to DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you remember, I click magic mask in my tool panel and it opened up this window. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing and click and nothing has happened. All right, so I think what I'm gonna need to do is drag. There we go, that's perfect. And I can see just like final cut had, we're gonna to need to expand some of our areas here. I feel like, okay, let's go backspace there. And then we need to go to the subtraction tool because it's selected our laptop again. And I think that's gonna be pretty much as good as we're gonna get. And let's click analyze. Straight off the bat for this clip, I can see DaVinci Resolve is actually tracking and analyzing our tool. Okay, there's some big problems there. All right, so for ease of applications, I think both softwares are pretty self-intuitive and therefore I'm gonna give them both an eight out of 10. Not too hard to figure out how to do it and just fine tweak it a little bit. Now, how good are the base effects that have been applied here? All right, we did very, very minor tweaking to both of them. We just kind of adjusted our selection. If I just scrub through my timeline here on Resolve, unfortunately I'm seeing some issues when my hands move up. The more I scrub, you can see that there's definite issues near our lower torso there. And I think that's, look there, I mean, that's definitely something that I would need to refine uh, in terms of go back into Fusion and color pick that area so that it doesn't eliminate. But generally speaking, if I just go ahead and play that in real time, where it did cut out perfectly, it's done a very sharp and perfect mask. Again, I would just need to refine that lower torso. And on Final Cut, if I go ahead and scrub through that, I can immediately see near the start that there's some fragmentation or something happening near my head. Uh, let's just see, we, we are definitely not having that torso issue. And near the end here, as I lift my hands, it actually does a perfect mask around my hands and everything looks sharp there. So much like DaVinci in that area there, if I just zoom in, 
right by my head that is something i would want to pull out so neither of them are perfect straight off the bat as you click apply i mean we're going to test them on the two different clips that we have in both softwares but neither of them were perfect but i definitely say that final cuts was kind of more sharp it understood what i was trying to go and it it cut our subject out a lot easier so i'd give final cut a seven and da vinci unfortunately because of that torso you get a five Knowing how to apply it, let's test our magic mask tools on some other applications and clips. For the second one, we have our subject wearing a blue shirt and a blue background. So by clicking it, I'm going to go ahead and apply it this way. And then let's do the same thing. Let's just click. Dude, there's something about that. You click it once and it outlines our subject. And then let's hit analyze. If we go over to DaVinci while that's analyzing, I can go to my clip, go to fusion. Let's apply my magic mask and do the same thing. We know in DaVinci, we kind of need to drag a line. Wait, why is it cut? Why is it cut here now? <laughs> I guess let's extend that. There we go. And now it's cut there. So I guess if we keep drawing lines, that looks really good. So we just needed to draw a couple extra lines and uh, let's click better there and click analyze as well. Interesting to note, even though I started the DaVinci analyzation, is that even a word? The DaVinci tracking later, it's actually finished before. Final Cut is only at 65% and DaVinci is done. But DaVinci definitely gets a point for speed. If you're doing a longer clip, you're gonna struggle in Final Cut and it's gonna be much faster in DaVinci. So let's look. After adding a couple of those extra lines, if we just scrub through here, Oh, I'm seeing a little issue on the shirt right there. But other than that, every other area. Yeah, every other area looks pretty much perfect. So just some points deducted for our shirt. If we go over to Final Cut, let's select Done. If I just go ahead and play that. Uh, there was an issue there with the shirt that we would need to fix. And definite uh, blue around our subject's hair but otherwise we're not getting that lower shirt. So both have one instance of a shirt issue. There's some blue around our subject's head there, and there's some definite blue around our subject's head there. What you would need to do in both is refine the mat by using a blur uh, and kind of changing up your threshold. You can see if I draw up my threshold there, um, some of that blue starts to go away. In Final Cut, I would select my feather tool and actually drag it to the minus so that it removes just some of the outer lines of our subject and we get a cleaner mask. So for that second blue clip, I'd give both of them a seven out of 10, just because there was one or two instances of issues and just with the minor tweaking, you'd actually have a perfect mask. Let's move on to the third clip. For the final application, we're gonna be doing this drone shot. So again, let's apply our magnetic mask in Final Cut, select our drone, and I can actually see that our blades haven't been selected. So I would need to drag over our blades as such. And let's go to the negative tool and just select that. There we go. That looks like a fine selection for me. In Resolve, let's go to our Fusion tool. Let's apply our Magic Mask. And let's see, because Da Vinci, let's drag there over our... Let's see how that works. All right, I think that looks good to me. Nope, that one was too much. And what we can do is click Better and let's analyze that. All right, so both are done. Let's go ahead and see how the drone footage compares. Definite issues on the blades there. Look, the blades weren't perfectly sharp. There was a lot of obviously motion blur on those blades, but as we play it, the actual drone itself looks fine. But yeah, the blades the blades will be an issue. And we'll, we'll, we'll do something just now to see how that, how that looks. In DaVinci, if we go ahead and play that, the blades actually look a lot better there. I'm getting way more refined movement when I compare it to Final Cut again. Yeah, there's a lot more kind of static in the photo or in the video. So we can see there on a very fast moving blade or something that isn't perfectly sharp, it seems like Da Vinci does a little bit better. Again, these are just kind of the base, the base. I haven't tweaked things. I haven't tried to change it up too much or spend too much time on both these clips. So straight out the bag, I think Da Vinci is gonna take this one. Definite issues that we would need to fix. So it gets a six out of 10, but final cut, I'm sorry. You get a five out of 10 just because Yours wasn't nearly as good as Da Vinci. As a bonus, we're doing one more clip. I realized that we didn't have something running towards us. And I know if you're like me, I like filming my dog. I'd love to test and see how this works on a dog clip. So let's again, go ahead and apply it. It perfectly identifies our dog, even though it's a little far away, just by clicking once. Let's go ahead and click analyze. Exactly the same portion of the clip in Da Vinci with one line. It seems like it's perfectly analyzed it as well. And let's go ahead and track that. 
And for both of them, I specifically chose to start our mask right before our subject actually appears. So we started the tracking in the middle of the frame and our subject disappears at the beginning of the frame. So it's gonna be interesting to see how both of them apply when that mask or subject actually isn't even visible on screen. Let's go ahead and view DaVinci's first. If I go ahead and click play, wow. Wow, wow, wow. That actually looks incredible to me. Just scrubbing through a little slower. There's a bit of flicker in one of these frames around the ear, but how does it handle our subject going down? Oh my word, that is honestly near perfect. I'd, I'd give that a nine out of 10. The subject is moving fast. There's areas where our subject isn't in focus. That is a, that is a really, really great mask. Let's go, uh, final cut, let's see how you've done. That looks near perfect to me. Honestly, our subject dips down, our subject runs out. There's just minor things we could feather around the ear, but otherwise, I think both of them have done an incredible, incredible job at really masking out this fast moving subject. So I'd give both DaVinci and Final Cut a nine out of 10. So now that we've seen the different softwares, how easy they are to use, the effect, how good they were, I do think Final Cut had the edge in some small instances and DaVinci had the edge in some small instances. So with some minor tweaking, I think both softwares are gonna be able to give you a near perfect result almost every time. Now, what are some creative ways inside of Final Cut that you could use this magnetic mask? One of the things you can do with a subject that doesn't have a background is place a new background in. You have full customization to whatever you want your picture to look like. Another thing we can do is place objects or text behind our subject. So simply by duplicating my video layer, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that magic mask on our base layer. So that gives us a layer where our subjects is at the top and our background is behind. Now what I can do is drag some text between our subject and our background. And let's go ahead and make this text a little bit bigger and I can drag it up. And you can see, if I go ahead and play that, our text is now behind our subject. And again, this can apply not only to text, but objects or really whatever you wanna put behind your subject and you can get really creative. Another thing you can do is relight your background. Now with a background layer and a subject layer, you can get really, really creative. On my background, let's say I wanted to completely desaturate my background and actually add some saturation to my subject layer. Now my subject has saturation and color, but my background doesn't. And this doesn't only apply to saturation. I could do a complete relight on the background without actually impacting my subject. And the last creative thing I can think of, I'm sure you'll have some other ideas, is to actually completely defocus our background from our subject. So we're not just gonna be able to apply our defocus to our background. If I go ahead and deselect that, you'll see why, because we're getting this weird outline effect around our subject. So let's disable our background layer. Let's duplicate our mask layer. You can see that our magnetic mask is on this layer. I'm going to disable this top layer. And on this middle layer right now, I'm actually going to go ahead and invert that mask. What that's done is it's actually removed ourselves from the frame as opposed to us being in the frame. Now, what we just have is our background that we can apply a Gaussian blur to and we can go up or down on that value. And then if I re-enable our subject layer, you can see that we are perfectly sharp and we've actually impacted our background. And there we go. Now we have a completely defocused background. Again, because there's some stuff in the foreground, it doesn't look too good. So we would need to redo that mask, but you get the point. The background can be blurred and our subject can be perfectly in focus.